Okay, good morning everybody. We are in the shop today for another little project. This is something I've been wanting to do for a few years now. I've researched it before and um, you can buy these but you just don't see them around that much which is an old-fashioned wooden toboggan with the curled up front end. Um, we're going to be steaming some wood. First we're going to make a jig to bend the wood. So um, I've got my work cut out for me. This is not going to happen all in one day. This is not a one day project. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get started here by making the mold here this morning and I'll turn this around We'll show you what's going on So I just found some old scrap plywood in my pile So I'm going to take these and I'm going to cut a radius on there and a place to slide the wood in once it comes out of the steamer And uh, I've already ordered a pressure cooker to do the steaming That came just a used one off of eBay and that should work for what I'm doing here so yeah, I'm gonna cut these, cut a radius in these and put some slats on it so I can bend the wood around. So I've decided I want about between 10 and 11 inches on the curl. So I'm gonna go ahead and bend this wood. I'm gonna mark five inches in there and five inches in here. I'm gonna set my little compass or a scribe or whatever you have. And I'm going to mark a radius on that. Like that. You know, I should probably come around a little bit extra, I'm thinking. Okay, so I am going to cut that out and come straight down with this. So that I'm actually, when I slide my boards in and I bend them around, that we actually get more of a curve than we want. So I'm going to mark that out and go cut it. Okay, so you can see what I did here. I marked this out, came along, and I marked the other side of it. So I'm going to get both sides of the jig out of this one piece of plywood. Over to the bandsaw. Okay, so you can see I have two pieces here that are the same exact size, real close. So I will space them apart enough to bend probably um, two inch ribs. You know, I'm gonna probably wanna make this thing oh, 18 inches apart, maybe 16. You know, they're about 15 inches. A toboggan is only about 15 inches. And I'm thinking I should probably go ahead and make this thing Maybe 20 inches. Give me plenty. Make a, make a jig 20 inches. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut a series of 2 by 2s that go around this thing so that we can slide them in and wrap them around. I'm going to make some 2 by 2s 22 inches. 20 inches. Well, that 2 by 12 has a lot of little staples in it, and I do not want to run that through my saw stop. So I set up my old junky saw over here. I'm going to be ripping these down into 1 inch, I decided. So I'm going to... Well, that's not the most efficient thing in the world, but it worked and it saved my saw stuff. Eighteen inches is what I'm getting. About like that. And I'm gonna wrap those up and around. Probably have a little more than I need, but I'll use them for something. So I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue here. Just because I don't really need that, but I'm going to do it just because I like to glue things together. And I think I'm just going to try to drive that in without piloting it. Yeah, 
inch and a quarter screws, just like that. I'm gonna flip it over and do the other one. Okay, so that is gonna be where you slide your boards in. Look at that, it's already wanting to start bending. When this stuff's all steamed and all gooey. So the plan is to have this thing sitting in this position here. I'm probably gonna have something holding on that end there. So you slide this in into those little gapperoonies and start wrapping it up around and clamping them in place as we go. Okay, so that's it for the, the jig on this thing. I'm gonna, tomorrow's Monday, everything opens back up. I'm gonna look around for some quarter sawn white oak when I'm down the distributor. And uh, I think we'll be ready to start wrapping this. It's already looking a little bit like a toboggan. Okay, on the little toboggan here, tonight I just wanted to start soaking this stuff because um, this is Friday night. On uh, Sunday morning, I want to bend this wood around the form. So I have my little uh, router table or my little router set up here with my uh, feather boards. And I already have it set up to accommodate that wood there. Because I'm going to put a little, just a quarter inch round over on each one of these edges here. I'm going to edge all, uh, ease all four edges so that um, they will look nice and to prevent any splitting when we start to bend it. Perfect, just a little round over on that edge. All right, so the boards are all routed. I had a couple little chip outs. One there, little one right there. I have a weird grain right there that I don't like. I'm gonna fill that and that little knot right there, which will go on top. This will be the bottom. But I'm just gonna go ahead and I mixed up some uh, epoxy putty here. So just some white oak dust with um, epoxy. I'm gonna fill all those and then stick them into the dunk tank and let them sit there for a couple of days and bend them. So there's all my boards in my little soaking tank. Now I'll clamp that. Now I can just get some hot water down in there without making a big mess. There, let's pull right about to the top there. I'll let that sit for a couple days. And into the steam box. Okay, good morning everybody. We are back in the shop on this toboggan project again. I got it all set up yesterday. Um, this morning I'm gonna start the fire in the steam box. Get that thing rolling and uh, Charles said he'd come out. I'm gonna let this go for at least an hour, hour and a half, steaming the wood. And then uh, Charles said he'd come out and help me bend it. So I'll show you what we got going on here. So there's my jig. I have it all rigged up with all the little brackets and clamps and things I need. And I have this little bench really weighted down with a whole bunch of weights. And these are full of concrete, little weights that I made. And here is the box. Uh, my buddy Mike from Ross Renovations gave me this box, or store. he's storing it over here. Anybody can use it. So I took his door and I just made another face for it that are gonna fit my slats for the toboggan. And I have it rigged up over on this side here with the propane. I'm gonna fill this up with water, start the fire in that baby. Then I've had these soaking since Friday, this is Sunday. I'm gonna take all these babies out of this uh, tube that I've had them soaking in and stick them into the steam box once I get the fire going. Let's just take a look and see what kind of steam we got. Oh yeah, we got steam coming out of that baby. 
Ow, oh, and it's hot too. So um, I'm gonna rig this thing up, fill it up. I dumped that water out. You can see a lot of the brown. The water, the, the white oak has a lot of tannin in it. You can see a lot of it. All right, let's start on the bottom here. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, there we go. The stuff is in the rack. So you know when I um when I filled this tube up, I filled it up to the top and and when I just dumped it out, the water was about down to here in it. So, I'm sure a little bit of that was evaporation, but most of it is sucked up into that wood. So, it's pretty darn wet. I think by the time we get this stuff steamed for a good hour, hour and a half, let it get good and warm, Extremely hot over 200 degrees and I got a little temp uh, thermometer over here to check it with Yeah, so I have this little thermometer here That we're going to be checking it with and we want it to get at least up over 200 degrees and I'm I'm thinking I should be able to just go like that There we go Once we hit 200 degrees inside that box So I have the heat on in the shop, but you see I did crack my garage door about two inches on the bottom Right by where that fire is just so it has plenty of oxygen. It's not burning up. What's inside the shop. Here. Okay It's been in for about a half hour now. Let's see what our temperatures at. Oh, we're right at about 200 degrees Look at that and you can see it seeping out on the wood here Let's just take a look Whoa, I think it's gonna work. Look at that. Oh It's wanting to bend just sitting there like that So we're gonna let that go another hour and a half at least I want to let it go at least two hours in the box. I've been doing some research on it You can see the water's dripping out of my box good. It's running downhill So that means the steam is running uphill that way to the most bendy end of it <clears throat> We're just gonna let it go for a while. Okay, we got the steamer going real good here. Um, Charles came out to help me bend these. We're gonna give this a try right now. I just went in and watched a couple of episodes of Norm Abram in the old New Yankee workshop. They were bending some furniture pieces and it looks like I'm on the right track. So we're gonna pull one of these out and give it a try. You know, if I set my coffee up here on this box, it keeps it nice and warm. All right, Charles. First one. Give it a try. Look at that. Look at that. You can just see it moving like a wet noodle. Better get it going. So let me pick the side I want up. This side up. So the plan here is get that down. Too bad. Not bad for the first try. 
This is the only one here that didn't work out very well. You can kind of see the grain was, I mean, it's a nice piece of quartered. The grain is going the right direction, but it has so much flecking in it and so much that it just uh, wouldn't quite make the bend. All right, so first attempt, you can see we had pretty darn good success. I think I should have let it get long, go a little longer and get a little hotter, but it's pretty darn good. Up underneath, pretty even. So yeah, I'm calling that success. Okay, it's Tuesday afternoon and we have a slight break in the action from the floors for a day or so. So I'm gonna pull this uh, toboggan here out of the mold that I have all these boards bent and see what they look like. Okay, good morning. We are back in the shop today. We're gonna to work on this um, toboggan, hopefully most of the day, and get this thing all put together. So let's just turn around and see where we're at. So last night I took it out of the mold, and you can see I did a few little epoxy spots on it where the grain had lifted right around the corner there. And this one here actually was one that broke and I re-steamed it, so it was a little short. You can see I did a little scarf joint right there. And when I put the frames on it, I'm gonna put another little piece over that one. It's gonna be a little repair right out the chute, but this is my first one. And uh, so I'm gonna sand these. I think I'm gonna just get my belt sander out and sand these right here on the bench one at a time, do the top and bottom, then probably get over there on my spindle sander and do these inside of these radiuses, clean them all up, and then get ready to make some frames for them. Well, that is smooth, but you can really see some of the tannins in the wood, that white oak. I'm not going to sand that completely out because I'll have to make it thinner than the other places. So that's about what I'm going to get. By the time I put the finish on it, you won't see that very much. Well, I'd sure like to use this edge sander for doing this radius right here, but I don't have the room without moving it. So I'm going to have to do it on my old one. And I have plenty of room to work that up and over like that. Okay, for the inside radius, I'm going to try to use this little spindle sander I got. It's just a cheapo from Harbor Freight, but I don't use these very often, so let's just give it a try. Okay, so we have our pieces here all sanded and laid out. Not necessarily in the way I'm gonna put them all together, but pretty much something like this. So I'm gonna start making my frames when I come back. And you know, I've talked to a few different people that have made these online and in person. And uh, no glue in the assembly. You want it to be flexible. And, and one guy made a good point to not um, put glue so that you can always repair it without having to break it. Okay, so making these frames, you know, I want a nice contrast to this white oak, so I'm thinking I could use this piece of walnut here would work for making my frames. Or I could use this jatoba. This is some old flooring that I could mill into it. You know, I think I'm gonna use the jatoba. I think it's gonna be nice, the white oak with the jatoba. It's kind of what, what I have in my house in the floor. So this is what I'm gonna mill into my pieces. You can see I have just enough in between those grooves to get a solid three quarter. I'm gonna mill that up right now.
this is kind of how it's going to work when I make the washboard. You see the end there, and then I'll make another cap for that. Okay, we're going to mix up a little epoxy and glue this washboard together here. Okay. Probably a little overkill. Okay, I'll let that sit. I'm going to run to the store and buy all my hardware. Alright, so what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to put a a um, eighth inch bullnose on the back side where the rabbit is and a quarter inch bullnose on the front side. Okay, so my pieces are all fit. I'm gonna start in the front here with this little washboard thing and I want that to fit nice and tight. So I'm fitting all my boards into that first. I'll clamp it down and start bolting those together. When I threw bolt these and I bought some really nice little oval head stainless steel inch, quarter inch by inch and a quarter bolts with acorn nuts for the bottom. Okay, on this, um you know, I thought I heard somebody calling this a washboard, but I heard another guy calling it a breadboard today. I'm just going to call it the front piece of my uh, toboggan from here on out. Yeah, that's going to help hold that together a little bit better. Okay, so this thing is all glued back together. I got my nice screws on the bottom. So, you know, it's still a very snug fit. I'm thinking I want to relieve that a little bit more so that I don't have to fight that so much like I did yesterday. I'm going to open that up just a little bit more on the bottom. Okay, so I have this front board on where I like it. All my boards are up tight. Now, when I bent these, I want them all to be straight right there. And then I'm going to work these curves out as I go down. So I'm gonna start off with my first hole a little off center because I have my rope that comes, my line that comes from the, the aft back there, the transom or the back of this thing all the way up to the bow or the front. So I am going to drill my first holes off center here so my rope can come up over here and then the rest of the ones in the middle will be all in the center. Okay, first hole, quarter inch. Next drill bit, I'm going to use this counter sink here for a number 12 or 14. It should work great for these quarter inch oval heads I have. Just about like that. Okay, so I have my quarter inch oval head here. I may have to put a little bigger. I'm going to counter sink that a little bit more. my quarter 20 stainless steel oval head on the bottom side washer lock washer and an acorn nut I'm not gonna over tighten this I'm just gonna make it nice and snug just like that all right, so that's the look on the top. And like I said, the line will be coming up over on this side and going across the top that holds it all together. And on the bottom, you're gonna have your acorn nut, just like that with a washer, lock, washer, nut. And everything she's gonna work out great. 
So when you go to the hardware store and you order, you buy just enough bolts, acorn nuts, washers and everything, make sure you get all the right ones. I got one that's an inch and a half and it doesn't work with my acorn nuts. So I got to actually cut a quarter of an inch off of this and make it work. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing here. It's what I've seen a lot of guys do is, um, you know, you start from the front. I actually did my very front piece here first. Then I'm working my way around that curve with all my clamps back here kind of loose so they can all move until I shift all those radius. Because every one of these boards has a little different grain and they bend a little bit differently. So I'm just pulling them all straight so then I can get start putting my frames in. It's going to have one here, one down here then like 15 inches apart. Which... Okay, so I have my first true board in there clamped up. Took a lot of clamps to get this thing to where I like the way it's holding it nice and straight and the radius really good. So here's the center of my frame. I have it all marked out. I'm gonna drill these here, then I'll remove these clamps and do the outboard screws on those. Okay, now for the moment of truth, I'll take off all these clamps and see how straight this stayed from here to here. Well, that took a lot of work. So that took a lot of work. I have a couple of Mars up there for my clamp, but that is pretty darn good. I don't think I need any more frames there. I left these proud. I'll just be cutting these off and trimming them up. So there's my first frame. Okay, so my next frame, you know, there's no real specific place it has to be. But I'm thinking I want it to be back from this a little bit so that when my rope comes up, my rope actually cants forward a little bit. And that's kind of my plan. So I'm thinking right about there is going to be my next frame. ones you can see I left this a little bit further outboard because I need to come through in the end here and put a half inch line in this frame right here that runs I'll cut these off flush and round them over then I need to come back with a 3 8 inch bit that runs through this frame all the way fore and after front to back on this to uh, attach the rope Okay, so now I'm gonna lay out the rest of my frames. You can see, got this one all in, so I measured it out. The last one, my shortest board, gonna go right about there. So I get about 16 and a quarter in between these frames. Um, I'm gonna lay those out right now. All right, so it's all framed up, it's all jigged. Now I'm gonna drill out these last three frames screw them on and this thing will be all put together on its own fasteners we'll flip it over and see what it looks like after that okay well you can see this took a lot to get to this point so we're going to take the clamps off right now flip it over and see where we're at see what it looks like and then uh, put everything away and regroup for the next project probably um, another day i'm about done for today so let's just take these clamps off of here see what we get Okay, so here is the rough end of bog, and you know it feels pretty darn good for as twisted and warped as all them boards were. And just flip it on over here. And there it is. You know, it actually, like I said, it narrows down. We're at 16 and a quarter in the back. And up here in the front, we're at about 16 oh, and 5 eighths. So it's actually shrunk back up a little bit. So there's the basic shape of our toboggan. So now I'm going to cut these off. I've got to drill my holes. 
in all these to run my lines up and back. I'm gonna do a little something here. I think I'm gonna glue a piece in there, epoxy a piece of wood in that little end there and shape that really nice so that I can drill another hole for the um, rope that you pull. So you can pull it back up the hill. Cut these all off, round them over. I'll make a nice straight line back here and round that back edge over. But yeah, so there's the shape of my toboggan. You can see one side's a little higher up there in the front. I'm gonna pull that down when I do the rope. It's a little springy still, so I'll be able to just tweak that down like that a little bit when I tie it all together. Some of the professional ones I've seen, they actually use um, little steel cables and uh, turnbuckles, but anyway. I guess this is what I'm gonna do next here. I'm gonna put away all this mess. You can see I used a lot of clamps and a lot of stuff just doing this. So I'm gonna get busy on that and we'll come back and start this project again on the next go round. Okay, good morning. So we are back here Friday morning. We're gonna uh, start off by cutting these off. And I got my rope here, you can see my line. That's gonna go up and down the two sides. I already have this marked out. This is 3 8 rope. I want to be able to drill a 3 8 hole. I'm hoping to use this long drill bit so I can get the right angle, so I'm not doing that at an angle like that. Should have probably pre-drilled those, but I didn't. So yeah, there's my rope, and it's a pretty looking rope. It's going to look great with the red pad. So that's my first step. Cut these off, drill some holes, sand and, and shape these up here. Just, and cut the back off and sand all that. Then I'm going to sand the whole thing down and get ready for a coat of finish. Okay, so I found this other drill bit I'm gonna use here. I can get it closer. I can get a better angle and almost a straight shot with that. Not quite straight, but pretty close. And I think I wanna drill a pilot hole first, just to see how, so I can come in from both directions without, without blasting a big hole out the back side. See how hard that Jatoba is, man. It warms up the wood, creates a lot of friction. So hopefully this is not gonna grab on me. Let's just find out here. Like that, and I'll come in from the other side. is what I call perfection. And this is actually one size bigger than a 3.8, so I'm gonna be a little better off. All right, I'm gonna continue that with all these, and I'll get back. Okay, so I drilled my pilot holes. You can see I have my pilot hole there, but before I'm blasting these big holes through, I decided to clamp a board on the back, a backing board, just to prevent the uh, Jatoba from blowing out. That way I only have to drill it from one side, plus I can't get my drill in from this side because of the curve. There, I know I'm all the way through as soon as I see them oak shavings. Let's do that again over here. Okay, now to finish it off with a little bit of a countersink, just to just to ease the edges a little bit. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah, that leaves it a nice little chamfered edge right on the edge of those holes to prevent the rope from chafing. Now, what saw do I use to cut these suckers off? Let's see. That Jatoba is really hard. Could I use one of these? I'm sure I could. You know what though? I'm a regular old American guy. I'm gonna try something a little different. That guy works pretty good. Finish that up, sand those all, be beautiful. That little piece that I put in there is gonna look pretty cool once it's all sanded and finished.
All right, now to cut off the uh, the stern or transom or the back, whatever you want to call it. So measuring back from my frame, this is my shortest one, and I'm going with the making this thing as long as I can with what I got. So I have an inch and an eighth there, and I have an inch and an eighth there. Let's just see how that works out with a framing square. Well, that's square across. I'm about an eighth of an inch off right there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just make it parallel with the frames. It doesn't have to be 100% perfectly symmetrical. So that's gonna be my line right there. Little Makita cordless that I've got. I don't use it for much. The Take my, I'm going to get my belt sander out now and square up all this stuff with my hand belt sander and uh, then start rounding everything over get it ready for finish. Okay, so I took this thing outside and I blew it off. I cleaned my whole shop as good as I can get it without completely emptying the shop out. It's been about six hours since I cleaned it. The dust has settled. I put on a clean shirt. I'm doing all I can to try to keep as much dust off of this thing as possible. So um, I'm going to mix up my first batch of West System. I have West Systems over there. Okay, you can see I have this Man of War Spar Marine Varnish. That's what I'm going to be using for the top coats. But for this base coat, I'm going to try this new... It's not new, but new to me. Um, I used to use West Systems a lot in the boat shop, but I don't use it much in floors. So I'm going to go with four pumps to start out here. So that is looking extremely nice. I'm going to flip this thing over, do the other side, and uh, let it sit till tomorrow. Okay, so I got coverage on everything on the whole toboggan. One coat of the West Systems. I'm just tipping it out right now. You know, in hindsight, I really think that the uh, West Systems is overkill. I'm going to show you a piece of wood that I varnished oh, over 20 years ago, and it still looks great with just regular marine varnish, which is what I'm putting over this. Just only two coats. Okay. And there it is. One coat of West Systems Epoxy. I'll sand this, put a couple more coats on it tomorrow. Okay, so I wanna just show you this piece of mahogany that I did, like I said, over 20, probably 25 years ago. So that just has Man of War Marine Varnish on it, or Spar Marine Varnish. Um, probably be four coats. You know, this is in a boat that I made many years ago and I, the boat got changed around I took this seat out but that's what it looks like after 25 years that still looks great you know this has been stored indoors most of the time you know it was on the boat for many years outside and then when I sold the boat and rearranged it this got sat in my wood pile but that would be plenty on that toboggan over there more than enough the epoxy's a little overkill I mean I wanted to try it and see it but now I know this would be good enough because a toboggan like that, it's going to get used two or three times a year and then hopefully stored in your attic or indoors in your garage or something. It's not going to be sitting outside in the weather unless you're a knucklehead these days because that thing there took a lot of work and if you were going to buy one, it would, wouldn't be cheap. Okay, good morning. So there it is with one coat of epoxy on it. I can see I have pretty good separation still in all my boards. 
You know, it's a heck of a nice coat on there. I wish I could almost just leave that, but I'm going to put at least one or two coats of the varnish on there just to give it the UV, UV protection. So yeah, let's flip this over and we're going to get to sand it. Nice and dry. I left the heat on in the shop all night just to uh, accommodate this thing. I usually don't do that. So let's get some sandpaper. Sand this thing. Okay, we're going to finish up the toboggan here. I got busy doing a few other projects. But <clears throat> an update on the finish on this. You know, I epoxy coated it. Then I put a varnish coat. The varnish coat stayed a little tacky, so I put another varnish coat. It never dried all the way. Um, you know, there was some kind of a problem with putting the spar varnish over the epoxy. I read about it. I heard you can do it. It didn't work on this. It stayed tacky. It never dried. So I ended up um, cleaning all that varnish off of this, and it was a painstaking, long process. Now I'm back down to my epoxy which I'm gonna leave this as the finish I'm just scotch brighting it right now I've got it down to where it finally powderizes and it's clean and dry I'm gonna I'm gonna clean this off and and wax it and that's gonna be the finish on this thing you know it's my first try at making a toboggan and that was my first try at doing that type of a finish with um, epoxy with varnish over it I'll never do it again you know it was something new and I thought I would be super special and make it great but you know a couple coats of varnish would have been plenty. As a matter of fact, I've seen guys, they just paste wax them and that's it. And then they melt the wax onto the bottom before they go down the hill. And that will happen on this before we go down the hill too. It will actually get, you know, some wax melted onto the bottom like you would do with your snow skis or a snowboard. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this little bit of uh, scotch writing here and uh, wax this thing and finish it off. Put the pad on it. Okay, final step. We're going to wax this baby and we're just using some Carnuba wax that I got here. We're going to wax it up really good, wipe it off. That's going to be a final. Well, I got to say, with all the trials on this thing, it sure turned out pretty darn nice. Um, you know, now it's just down to that coat of epoxy, which is down to a scotch bright sand purple pad, and then a coat of wax. And it is slick. This thing is gonna fly down the hill. Well, next year, because we're done with snow for this year. But anyway, I'm gonna get busy tying this thing up. I just thought I'd let you see what it looks like. All done. Okay, so. Okay, so here is my pad that I ordered off of eBay, or maybe it was Amazon. can't remember. It was quite a while ago. I've been thinking about building this thing for a couple of years, actually. So that's going to be the pad that I'm going to tie onto it, right about like that. And that's right about where your first butt sits. One, two, three people max on this, I think. And this is the rope I'm going to tie it up with, or, or a line. You know, it's a rope when it's like this, but once it has a purpose on a boat, it becomes a line. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna get busy on that stuff. Okay, well that took a little longer than I expected tying that line on there, but you can see I got my the front or the bow forward portion of this thing nice and leveled off by pulling down those those lines. So this one here is a little little more taut than that one, but that's okay. And the way I did it, you can see here I gave the I just incorporated the pull rope right into the knots. So now I'm going to pull those nice and taut 
towards the back, tie some knots there, cut these off, um, cauterize them or burn the ends, and uh, I'll put the pad on. There. Okay, on to the last and final step on the toboggan project is to put down the pad. I'm thinking right about there. You know, this whole thing stems from a childhood, a childhood memory of uh, my cousins in Sterling, New Jersey. We used to go up there in the winter time sometimes and. My cousin John and Paul and Ruthie and Margaret, they would, um, they had a hill by their house and um, a friend of John's had a toboggan and I remember riding that toboggan as a very, very young boy and I've always thought toboggans were cool. So now, I've built my own toboggan, just for fun. So I'll finish tying this on and uh, give you a final when it's all done.